Hi. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Very good. Good. Yeah. In a previous interview, um, you described the purpose of a work of art as being to interrogate the conditions of its, of its own production. Could you expand on that? Elucidate what that, what that means? I can say it slower. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess the relationship between how a work is, what it's made of, and its content is something to do with you know, the, the, the way in which a, a work of art um, uh, negotiates meaning has to first consider how it negotiates meaning by its objecthood. Um, so the physicality of a work of art is the process by which the work will have meaning. So it would, be, it would be, it suggest that the first thing that one, one would have to consider as an artist is to, say, is to say what is the condition of that, the objectivity of a work of art. I mean, how does a, how does a work of art contain content? How does it, have, how does it, how does it mean? Um, and so, before a work of art presumes that it can say something about the wor world, it has to make uh, a, a critical inquiry into how it says anything about anything. Has your artwork ever gone beyond that stage? Has your artwork always been effectively engaged in that, in that question or in that process? I, I, don't, I don't think there is any other process for us. You say that language is bound by language and that language doesn't just have a first order relationship to the world in terms of its ability to just simply express the world. The world is also language. And so, you know, in order to, in order to understand the potential of a work of art to say anything about anything, it, one has to regard what its language is. So it's not to say that the, the, the to, to be concerned about the conditions of, the, of, of its own production means to say that the work, the work is kind of mute. But it's to say that part of how the work is made, how the work attends to, to meaning, is, is something to do with its effective ability to say anything about anything. In terms of your use of language and, and uh, semiotics and very overloaded symbols, yeah. in your choice of the very overloaded symbols that um, you picked, whether it's swastikas, the Nazis, smiley faces, the McDonald's universe, Yes. Your choice of that material is not only about language, but also the reception of language in the world and within the environment of contemporary art and, and wider culture. So sure. you're also commenting on the social structures that surround the production of art itself. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the reason that we're interested in, um, you know, that we have a kind of uh, a lexicon of iconographic, generic uh, uh, forms of representation is that we, we prefer not to assume that making art is a progressive activity. We quite like the idea that our work is a, a demonstration of, 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 uh, of a stalled, stalled movement, you know, that these, 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 these kind of um, impoverished mechanisms of, of, of expression are, are not, um, we're not bestowing upon um, the viewer a sense in which the work is helping them to understand the world. We're just kind of really representing uh, these 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 uh, images of, of kind of impoverished failure over and over and over again, just to kind of underscore uh, you know underscore the idea that art is kind of uh, or, the, or at least our art is not um, motivated by a kind of utopian notion of progress. You might not have any uh, programmatic interest in the audience's reaction to the work, but when you make those choices, for example, when you first decided to make Hell and started producing that, to what extent did you anticipate the kind of misreadings that were visited upon the work uh, once it was public? I, th I think we assume that there's going to be a broad spectrum of responses to the work because I mean, apart from anything else, because there's two of us making the work, I, I don't really know why Jake's making the work. And, and I guess he doesn't really know why I'm making it. So there's already a, there's already a kind of a, a fault line there. And then once the work is out of the studio, it's, it's out of our control anyway, so... It's in terms of this kind of um, tendency towards inviting misrepresentation, it's not to assume that there's a perfect interpretation of the work. Um, but, it's the, but there are sort of functional um, you know, mechanisms in, in, in implicit in the work which, which allow this kind of process to happen. And like, a good example of that would be, say, for the hell works, the diorama pieces that demonstrate millions of little Nazis being tortured. 
what's interesting about the repetitive nature of making this work is that the repetitive misinterpretation seems to go in, in tandem to the work. And what I mean by that, the work is often described critically as a representation of the Holocaust. And in a sense, when you look at the work, you know, the, you have the absolute inverse. The Nazis are being subjected to a genocidal sort of mechanism. So in a sense, that out of all the works of art that exist in the world, this is the one work of art that's so far away from the Holocaust. It's the paradigmatic opposite. You know, the notion of the Holocaust is, is explicitly to do with the historical conditions which, based upon fact, that people were genocided by Nazis. Our work presents the inverse of that. And yet what's interesting about is the, the, the work is this persistent interpretation of the work as being similar to this historical event. I mean, in a sense, what we've done is we've produced something which could not be more diametrically opposed to the historical event. I mean, even, you know, even just the, 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 the facts in which there are sort of mutants and there's Stephen Hawking and there are all sorts of kind of like unrealistic sort of avatars and little, you know, the, even the interpretation of the work, the way in which this, the work is discussed, that the detail of these pieces can be overlooked in favour of some reductive description of the Holocaust. So, yes, the, the short answer is that, you know, there's an invitation on the part of the work to to capture the viewer in a series of kind of um, slightly convulsive uh, 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 readings of the work, you know. I was interested in asking that question because I'm interested in the way that your work works, basically. So, I mean, one way to describe them, uh, the works might be that they're kind of, they're traps, they're kind of semiotic traps. Yeah. So I guess, although the intentionality, you know, it's interesting to assess the intentionality of the work as a trap in, in that sense. Yes, yeah. Well, I think, you know, the idea of making a, a, an art is, a work of art is, you know, kind of conventionally um, presumed to be a kind of a, a transaction between the artist and the viewer, that the work of art acts as the confessional window upon the artist's autobiographical sort of expression, and so that the viewer assumes that the work of art is telling the truth. You know, there's the presumption that works of art tell the truth. Or, or try to communicate. Or trying to communicate, kind of but, but, there, but there's something sincere in terms of the kind of empathetic response between the, the, the object and the, and the viewer. The viewer doesn't kind of interrogate a work of art as a lie. You know, they presume that the work of art is telling something, something sincere. So there's always a kind of psychotic projection involved, well, basically, in the reception. Well, the well, just, well just, that the, that just that the work of art is presumed to have a kind of an anthropomorph anthropomorphic dimension, which is without question. I think what we try to do, certainly by the, you know, by the idea that two of us produce the work, is that, you know, that because the work can't be generated from some um, egocentric autobiographical expression, it means to say that the work is necessarily duplicitous. It's made by two people who may not even agree as to the meaning of the work. So the work itself then becomes something exists, that exists in the world as a thing which subjects the viewer to something kind of, that, that kind of entangles them in, in, in a confused relation of exchange where they can sort the, 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 to see a picture of a, uh, a skeleton or a picture of a, a wasp doesn't mean to say that what they're expressing is the, is a, is the profound you know, sincerity of the artist, but they can suspect that actually most, most of this stuff isn't what it actually presents itself as being. That machinic element um, within your work is exacerbated by repetition and the repetition of content and, and form as a tactic. Yeah. All the symbols are, are, are very mutable. You know, the, the smiley faces, the swastikas, the, the, the rainbow socks, the Ku Klux Klan kind of gowns. They're, 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 they're not symbolizing anything in particular. It's, it's you know, it, it's, they're, they're, all, they're, all, they're interchangeable and, and kind of, um, you know, Ronald McDonald is, is, is crucified as Jesus Christ in, in one part of hell and then is they're always, they're always quite exhausted um, symbols, yeah, though, aren't they? Yeah. They're kind of symbols with an exhausted semi. Well, you know, pe pe people, people know them. And they, they I mean, it, it, I guess it's part of the reason why people sort of are so quick to make assumptions about the work, because they see these symbols and they, they, they already have assumptions about those symbols and they apply them without, without question. Um, you know, the, the, idea of, the idea of looking at, you know, 10,000 Nazis um, being tortured and, and to kind of actually ignore the torture bit and just see the Nazis and assume it's... It's something which is so kind of like, um, so demonstrably unreal and speculative and ludicrous 
and ex you know perhaps you know philosophically experimental is reduced to re to to, to a, a form of realism which is kind of you know blatantly sort of against the reality of the work you know that the work is you know you present this kind of you know, even that actually part of the process of the work is to exacerbate that kind of mis mis misreading by by producing and, and introducing ever more stupid forms of content that should provoke a kind of uh, uh, should be indicators as, as to as to as to you know, readjust the interpretation of the work, and yet what happens? Is, I mean, you can put dinosaurs giving birth to Nazis, and still the work is reduced to some historical moment, as though somehow there's a kind of there's a there's a the, the repetition is not just to do with the work, but there's a repetition on the part of the viewer to keep repeating this compulsion to repeat. So, so the repetition is really kind of stretching the the mode of representation, right? It's is it stretching representation as far as it can go? Well, but represent, rep, repetition is interesting because it implies, you know, it, there's something kind of mechanical and, and industrial about sort of producing something over and over again. It kind of seems inconsistent to a work of art, you know, that works of art are, are supposed to indicate some kind of progressive um, calibration of, 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 of modification. You know, it's, you, know, work, you know, an artist's body of work is supposed to represent some kind of uh, uh, achievable evolution, you know. But it, uh, I mean, in that sense, when you're talking about progressive in that sense, you're not talking about progressive in an enlightenment sense, it, more in a kind of micro sense. Yeah, no, a, uh, yeah, no, 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 absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think, so the idea that actually, you know, that, the, that there's no, uh, there's, you know, that, that part of the idea of, of using kind of, a, a, a kind of a, an aggregate set of, of already impoverished icons and images means to say that there's no, there's no attempt on the part of the work to... Uh, better itself, and that now I am talking about it, better edify itself in terms of some sense in which the work is trying to uh, you know, help the viewer to, to, to perceive the world in some kind of but better way. It does the way. opposite. It does, it does the exact opposite, doesn't it? Because by, by repetition, you know, if, 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 if we are still failing to convince people that these things are not about the things that they say they are, so we, we make them more ridiculous, you know, dinosaurs giving birth to Nazis, spacemen, cavemen, and still those interpretations persist. It's that, that the kind of repetition is, is, is kind of like... Well, it makes its point as well, though, doesn't it, it simultaneously? It, well, it tries to. Impossibility of communication in that well, sense. Well, you know, yeah. the, the idea of kind of reiterating a point would assume that the point had some point to it. You know, but if the reiteration of the point is pointlessness, it's a very spiteful mode of, mode of uh, artistic practice to reiterate something which doesn't benefit the viewer at all. You know. I mean, your choice of, uh, of Goya, because in this exhibition we've got Insult to Injury, which was is probably your most famous work in terms of the engagement with Goya, at least in popular terms. Why did you choose Goya? He's, he's sort of ground zero. <laughs> Goya's ground zero. In, in terms of, you know, where... Representing a, a modern artist, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, an artist who has a sense of responsibility towards something other than the church or the state. So it, he's the kind of, you know, he, he's the, the emergent sort of representee of modernity. You know, he's the person who sort of um, uh, kind of uh, depicts the, 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 you know, the world after the dereliction of, of Christianity. You know, this notion of sort of, you know, artistic self-doubt, you know. Suddenly, you know, the, the, the introduction and the, and the kind of the, the kind of supposed dis discovery of the notion of psychology, you know, the idea that somehow, you know, we're not, con you know, our, our existence isn't contributed or defined by divine, uh, div divine intervention. It's, it's, it's contributed by sort of the existential uh, 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 disappointment of, of gravity. You know, it's kind of the idea that we're kind of sub that there's no, that, you know, we're subject to the kind of physical forces which don't, in any sense. Um, end with redemption. Within the traditional or oh, historical narrative about Goya, yeah. I mean he's seen as progressive because he's, particularly with the disasters of war, he's the emergence of this morally engaged yeah. subjectivity in the form of you know, an artist onto the world stage. Yeah. But your work presumably argues that that's a, a, a misrepresentation of, of the actual content of his work. Yeah. I mean, so it's an imposition. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know that, that it, it seems to to us that the the degree to which his work is kind of um, celebrated as a kind of iconographic uh, 
uh, a demonstration of, of, a, of a humanist discourse in terms of its kind of portrayal of, of, of atrocity, you know, man's inhumanity to man, you know, as is often associated with those works, is that in a sense the degree, the valence of that protection, that institutional protection, seems to kind of betray a dark underbelly, which is that when you look at the work, the work seems to in, engage in a form of violence which undermines the very protectionist framework given to it. You know. So we're interested in how something which seems to be so uh, uh, emblematic of the idea of kind of, you know, uh, of, 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 of a humanist discourse on sort of, uh, uh, you know, almost in a, in like a, a, a way of, 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 of trying to inscribe some morality, you know, some kind of a moral imperative that after, you know, the, the, the decline of, of, of God, you know. And in some senses, when you look at the work, you know, when you look at the materiality of the work, when you look at the, 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 the lacerations, the drawings, the attention given to the moments of violence in there, it, it kind of under, undermines the, 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 the degree to which these things can be um, emblematic of something positive. So once again, there's a kind of um, hysterical myopia in terms of the reading of the work, in yes. the same way yes. that your work provokes kind of similar misreadings, yes. but yes. where the misreadings in this sense are kind of institutional and over a prolonged period of time. Well, I think, um, yeah, and, I, and that there's something implicit to the idea of a, of a moral imp imperative and a transgression that transgresses the moral imperative, that there's some kind of complicit relationship between the idea of, uh, um, you know, a kind of human morality and its kind of investment in a libid libidinal economy which undermines that, you know. Th there's, no, there's no morality without violence, that violence is implicit in, in, in the, the moral order. Um, in terms of your work, very explicitly attacking um, progressive ideas and, and being inherently pessimistic. To what extent do you think contemporary art discourse is really still bound up in that idea of progress? Do you think that's really still a current idea that your work operates against, you know, in, in, this, in this context? Well, it, I mean, I, mean I, th I think that, you know, the, the sense in which, I mean, it, there's an easy way of answering that, kind of a pretty kind of straightforward, is, 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 is how you know, kind of contemporary art, you know, even the most kind of extreme uh, forms of sort of supposedly uh, conceptual art, which have become overtly humanised, are, you know, they're kind of consistent with at least the trajectory of gentrification, you know. So that would necessarily say that though, though the, the idea so that... Progress the, with a small p. Exactly. Well, well no, no progress with a quite a big p, actually. Capital P, yeah. You know, the, the, the notion that sort of, you know, that art has some, you know, that if, that if art was kind of, you know, allowed to just kind of circulate within its own mire, that would be kind of interesting. I think that's what we try to do with our work. But, but you, I'm, not, I'm not kind of, I'm not sort of just necessarily referring to a romantic discourse about art's progress. I mean, you know, even in, in a sense, what, you know, the idea of how, um, you know, contemporary art seems now to express, uh, you know, the demographic sort of, uh, notion of, 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 of class mobility, you know, still alludes to some notion of, of, of t teleological enlightenment, you know, because we're all moving towards this idea of becoming more civilised, and I think art is, you know, no less involved in that aspiration.